The third one of the five C's is about charisma. And it sort of contradicts the idea of conformity, but you can use it in a little bit of a different setting. Charisma doesn't build on the notion that we want to belong and relate to each other, but it builds on the notion that I want to be like you. There are huge companies that have launched new services using this methodology. And it's about limiting the size of a scarce resource. Mostly it is called an invite, right? And so you invite a few people to something, you give them access to something valuable. And then you give them more access than they can take care of themselves, so they have to sprinkle it on top of their network. Spotify, uh, the music streaming service, they used this when they launched their, their, their service. So the way it goes is that you distribute, you send out invites, and you send out a super invite actually, which gives you the right to invite five other people. You send that out first. What you do then is you do PR. And the PR uh, is supposed to increase the value of this asset. So you try to get a publishment somewhere describing that it's, this is a select few people who have received this asset and that it's highly val valuable. Whatever, in Spotify's case, it was, you know, these few people have access to all the music in the world, yada, yada, yada. And so for me, who have this asset, I go, oh my God, I have a valuable thing. Now, if I have a nine personality in terms of music, in the case of Spotify, what I'll do is I have a reason to talk about myself now, which I love. So I'll go on Facebook and I'll be like, oh, I got invited by Spotify. Oh, and... I have only four invites left, right? That's what people do. And people are like, who would Spotify? And you just like slam them in the head with that article saying that you are amazing and that this invite is super valuable and that person is not gonna get any of it, right? So the whole idea of charisma is having, uh, uh, having some assets that you, by using PR, you increase the value of those assets and you limit the access to those assets, meaning they increase in value socially between people. Giving people, anyone who has gotten one of those assets, it gives them a reason to talk about it. There is this conference in the Nordics called Nordic JS. They've managed by using, you know, segmented releases of their tickets. They've managed it to create extreme hype around their conference. Meaning people, when they bought a ticket, when they paid the company, when they paid the conference, people go on Twitter to celebrate that they were one of the few who actually got a ticket. What this does is it builds aspiration to get to this event. Because people are happy. I paid the money. I'm so happy. Right. It's insane, but it is what happens when charisma is in play. You limit the access of something, you only give it to some who can then distribute it to others. Now, one or two years back, people started getting a humongous amount of invites. And so we saw that it started decreasing the effect of this tactic or this approach. So what we did was that we needed to shift the mindset, going back to the, the conversion formula, we needed to shift the mindset of those people who, um, who we got in touch with, not to try to give them an invite that was valuable, but to shift the perspective that we were trying to take it away from them. That's something that they already had. And so the tactic we developed then was that first we sent an invite to everyone or to 100 selected top uh, influencers. Then we went and we bought some native advertising or we managed to pitch a journalist that was stressed and just published whatever we wrote, uh, published it in a paper. And then, so we send the invite, no response. We get the publication, we take the link to that publication, and then we write a second email to the same influencer and we write expiration of invite, meaning that we are gonna remove this invite if they do not redeem it within 24 hours. In that email, we put this link to the publication describing them as, you know, the most powerful influencers in the universe, right? What we see now is that as we threaten to take the invite away, we almost get 100% redemption rate on those links. We get like 5% redemption on the initial links, 
but on the second pair of links, we get almost 100% redemption. And the reason there is that they believe that they have something now that we are trying to take away. So what I do is that they at least go into the service and do a little sign up. And then we got them, right? Because then we can use other tactics and techniques in order to win them back and, you know, figure out who they are in order to message them more, more uh, accurately. But Charisma, it is not, it's probably um, a system that works best, the, the, the harsher the hierarchy is within the social structure you're in, charisma will work better because people understand that with limi a limited asset there is power to be gained by being able to distribute that asset. So think about Gmail they launched, Spotify how they launched, conferences how they build it up in early bird ticketing and things like that. That's charisma in play. If you manage to use charisma in your creative setup, you know, limiting access to something like bar invites or, you know, ticketing or something like that, then you're in a very good spot to create that effect where people go online boasting about that they have access to this limited uh, resource. So that's all I have to say about charisma for now.